this country when we were trying to make racism a mental illness. Did you guys know that? Yeah, we were trying to make racism a mental illness, which would mean that hate crimes would get the insanity plea. The devil made me kill them Mexicans. Time out. The point of the devil is to punish people with shitty values like racism and listening to John Mayer too much. <laughs> Plus the devil is an immigrant on this plane of existence. So why would he vote against his own self-interest? <laughs> It's not considered uh, a mental illness, right? The DSM refuses to consider a mental illness because it takes accountability away from the behavior. And that's important. We need to put accountability on that behavior. Yeah, because there is no magic cure for racism, right? There's no pill you can take or vaccine you can get. You're never gonna hear somebody be like, watch out for Riddell, man. Yeah, he's got a bad case of the racisms this week. <laughs> yeah, dropping M-bombs just like Obama, you know what I'm saying? We gonna take him down to the library, read him up some Civil War books, see if that doesn't calm him down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think what's happening in this country is a whole lot of silencing, right? Both sides do it, liberals and conservatives. The words you can't say, ideas you can't express, that's not a solution to the problem. Calling someone a racist is not a solution to the problem. And go ahead, call them a racist. See if they want to hold on to that label. They'll get defensive real fucking fast, right? I ain't no fucking racist, all right? Just because I don't think black people should vote, okay? And Mexicans, they're just stealing all the jobs, right? And Jews, they ain't even like people, right? They're like a mix of black magic and the earth. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm fucking racist. It means I'm a goddamn realist. Okay, listen, I'm gonna get you like a dictionary for your birthday, right? And just like a bunch of encyclopedias for Christmas and just a parade of history textbooks for our birthday. And then you can just build a wall of education around yourself. <laughs> the problem is we're not talking to each other anymore, right? And I'm part of that problem too. I haven't gone up to a racist and asked him why he hates the Mexicans. And if his response is, well, my pappy told me to, well, that's not a good enough response. You should probably ask your pappy why he hates the Mexicans. And if his response is that his pappy told him to, well, fuck, now we're going down this weird, boring spiral of hate and misunderstanding. It's like a snake trying to eat and hate itself at the same time. <laughs> yeah, but these racists haven't talked to these Mexicans either, right? And if we talk to each other, we might find out that the things we hate so much contribute to things we love so dearly. Yeah, like if you love tacos, but hate Mexicans. <laughs> there is a problem. You're either going to have to start talking to Mexicans or stop eating tacos. And tacos are harder to quit than cigarettes. <laughs> It's up to us, though. We need to start educating the ignorant a little bit more. But society is far too complacent with its own ignorance. We get a lot of our information from 140 characters and memes, and we think we know everything. Yeah, that's like going into the library, looking at a book on a shelf, and thinking you know the whole story, right? Tale of Two Cities. Nailed it. <laughs> but no, you didn't even take it off the shelf. There's like characters and, and a plot and emotions and 437 pages. God damn it, Carl, all right? It's about two cities. One of them's got a tail. Nobody likes that shit. It's weird. Nailed it. Next book.
You know, I just don't think tourist spots represent the place that you're in. You know, it just doesn't do that for me. Like when people come to the states, they always ask me like where to go, and they ask me if like what about the Statue of Liberty, and I never tell people to go to the Statue of Liberty. I don't think the Statue of Liberty represents America because she's a woman. So. <laughs> And she's French? Holy fuck. I am astounded we haven't mounted her down and turned her into a gun. You know? Just aggressively pointing at the Atlantic. Big neon sign that says, Try it, motherfucker! Do you really want the, stat uh, the Grand Canyon to be the representation of America? A big fucking hole? <laughs> I mean, it's accurate, but do you really want it to? You know? <laughs> right? so, I always found that people represent a place to me, you know? This is how I always learn about where I'm at, right? I've always talked to people and learned the coolest shit about the place that I'm in. You know, people, like, there are some places that I go, you know, if I, if I got a little extra time or something, like, I'll, I'll hang out with people, and they always want me to take you around the city and stuff and show me, like, the cool touristy stuff. And it's always, like, we'll always wind up going to, like, a statue of, like, a man on a horse, you know? And they're like, this guy had some slaves <laughs> and some horses, and the horses were treated better, right? Like... It's just like, I don't give a shit about this person, you know? And then they'd always, they always like throw this nugget of like the coolest shit I've ever heard in my entire life. You know, and they're like, yeah, well, so this guy's on a horse. Uh, over here is where those fake Satanists were murdered by the Covenant Witches. <laughs> <laughs> Why would we be talking about this the whole time? <laughs> just gonna throw it out there like it's nothing? Oh my god! Let's go talk about this. Uh, you, uh, is the Covenant Witches still here? Are they still here? <laughs> Can you join? How do you join? Do they have a membership program? Or what's going on?
right, everybody. Hello, how's it going? Good to see you guys. Welcome to the program. If you're new, hello. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you become a a, a regular viewer of the of the show. Um, if if you're a, a, a returning uh, returning member of the show, is that a thing? Uh, <laughs> welcome back. Thank you for hanging out. I'm gonna put this thing down at the bottom. Uh, about uh, about some live shows. We've got some folks over on the Facebooks. Hello, thank you for joining the show. Uh, some people over on the Rockfin. Holly, Holly's in doing doing the cynical girl wanders in move. Classic uh, wandering in. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me. Some folks over on the Odyssey as well. Uh, and for those uh, listening later, po possibly on the audio version of this uh, of the show. Uh, hey, what's up? How's it going? I hope uh, I hope things are things are looking good uh, where you are. Uh, as always, at the top of the show, we do a little check in to see how everybody is doing, and I get to I'll let you know what's going on with me. As you can see, if if you're if you're watching the the video, the ticker at the bottom uh, has a couple of cities where I have some confirmed show dates. We've got uh, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Baltimore, Lansing, Detroit. Um, and, and I, I'm adding more cities. I'm looking at uh, Columbus. I'm looking at Huntsville. I'm looking at uh, Memphis, Little Rock, Louisville, Cincinnati, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, Greensboro, Chicago, Minneapolis. These are cities that I'm 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 actively working to book shows at Williamsport, Pennsylvania, Washington D.C. I'm 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 hopefully going to be coming to those cities uh, in the near future. Best place to to get all this information is right on my website, krishmohanhaha.com. As the tickets go on sale, I will definitely let you guys know here, but the website will be uh, updated as well. The email list is another way to, to get all your updates for live shows. Uh, very excited that they they are they are coming back, uh, you know, and we're gonna do our best to try to stay safe uh, for these live shows as well. Uh, make sure that everybody is comfortable in the space and uh, all that good stuff. Fun car update, you guys. If if uh, if you haven't been keeping uh, up to speed, if you're if you're someone that uh, this is your first time viewing, uh, my car got illegally repossessed by the bank, and yesterday evening, I got the this is the repo notice from Citizens One. This is something that they're supposed to send to you either the day of or the day after, or even just as a warning to be like, hey, this is going to happen. Here's here's what the situation is. Uh, they sent it to me a week after is when I received it, a week after my car got repossessed. Um, and uh, they sent it out the day after the car got repossessed, which means that had I not been at home, um, you know, if I was out uh, you know, if I was taking a walk, if I had been in the bathroom, if I was showering, if I was doing anything other than what I was doing at that moment, I wouldn't have known for a week where my car went. I would have been dumbfounded. You know, it's in this strange lot in Altoona, Pennsylvania, two hours away from Pittsburgh. What's it doing there? I don't know. I don't know how to get there. I don't know how to make arrangements. What's going on? How much do I owe? What do I do to pay it off? None of that information I would have found out had I not been at home, had I not been someone that knows how to deal with this situation. If I was just if I, this was my first car that I had ever bought, and this is the first bank that I'd ever dealt with. I would have no idea, no idea. A week later, which would mean that I would have racked up. Uh, let's see, two hundred and eighty dollars in storage fees on top of the so on top of the fifty that they charge. So that would have been three hundred and thirty dollars that I would have had to pay to the tow yard in order to release my car on top of the tow fee. So I would have been looking at about twenty five hundred bucks at that point. Save myself a hundred dollars. Um. So yeah, I was pretty ticked off about that. They got back to me on Twitter today and I was basically like, hey, you can figure out how to give me my money back that you made me spend unnecessarily. 
um, you know, and, and I kept calling them predatory and fraudulent. And uh, I don't think they're allowed to respond to those things. So they just said, we'll forward your information to the to the appropriate parties. We'll forward your information, um, you know, so uh, th this is capitalism, you guys. This is what capitalism is. Um, you know, it's, it's predatory, it's evil. It's, it, it makes sure that people are left in destitution. It exploits you. It abuses its power to ensure that people that don't have any are, uh, you know, trapped within its web. So yeah, that's been a fun little thing. Um, other than that, I mean, today has been a kind of a scatterbrain day, to be honest. I've, I've been a little scattered. I've been trying to deal with, um, I, I can't get access to my Rockfin tips or any of the money that I've gotten from Rockfin through through Ray tokens and everything um, because my Coinbase wallet won't let me access my account. So I'm going through all of that shit. So that's been a whole big thing. I'm not discouraging people if they want to leave tips on Rockfin. Um, just letting you know, like, if you do, I'm probably not going to get it for a little while. Uh, but the folks at Rockfin have been very, very nice and and quick in terms of responding to to how to help me figure out how to get access to my account. Um, so you know that's been pretty cool. Again, another reason why you should support places like Rockfin and Odyssey instead of uh, YouTube and Facebook, who don't give a fuck about you. Um, the other thing I wanted to start doing is. I have this idea uh, that I want to call road reflection reviews where I just review stuff. Um, you know, uh, I want to do music and television and, and comic books and stuff like that. Movies, uh, things that I've watched and that ideally what it would be if I can get enough, like it's a matter of time and that equals unfortunately money. So if I can get more donations, if I can get, well, not doing it, sustaining members, if I can get a couple more sustaining members, I'll be able to dedicate a day of the week where we spend an hour talking about something. Um, and these would likely be exclusives on Rockfin and Odyssey because if I'm doing some kind of pop culture review and I want to use footage um, or or clips or or musical segments, I can't do that on YouTube. So these would be exclusively for people on Rockfin and Odyssey. Um, and I, and I, that is something that I would like to do uh, as well. I mean, I could put it up on YouTube, but it, it wouldn't be available to the public. Um, so, you know, maybe I would be able to share it on on the email list as, in, as a YouTube thing um, that way. So I haven't uh, th there's some stuff that I'm definitely going to need to flush out about this idea. But that is something that I would like to do. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I wanted to kind of express that and put that out into the world, uh, and let you guys know about it. Uh, you guys know, you guys know the dip, you guys know the deal. Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of different topics today. We've got three, and if I have time to do a fourth one, I'll do a fourth one as well. Um, but the fourth one's kind of just like, all right, I'm, it's more of just me going to be venting about a particular situation. Uh, and, uh, I encourage you guys to leave comments. I encourage you guys to, you know, and, and be cordial in the comments. You know, I, I know some people are going to get a little snar snarky and sarcastic and that's okay. I don't mind that it's being an outright dick and making, you know, making, uh, obscene or vulgar con uh, uh, comments towards each other. Uh, I don't give a shit if you say fuck the oligarchy or some shit like that, but just, you know, be, be a, uh, be, be, just be a decent person. We're all adults here. Uh, you know, so like use, use that, uh, fun adult brain, uh, that we, that we all have in our heads. Okay. Um, let's dive in. Let's dive into, to the stories of the day. So I know this is, people have kind of talked about this topic um a lot and this is something that i do want to kind of explore a little bit more so i it, it involves doing a little bit more of in-depth research but there's been this wave uh particularly from i don't even want to say the conservative side right uh what i think it is is it's a wave of rich white fucking people whether they're rich white liberals rich white conservatives they're all kind of on the same side of this right um, 
it's the fact that teaching the the actual history of America, the racist history of America, is controversial now. Right, this notion of the critical race theory, uh, which I, you know, I I don't know the exact wordings of the critical race theory or what it is or whatnot. Uh, I've had somebody kind of explain it to me over on Twitter. Basically, it's like teaching the inherent racism that exists in America. <laughs> like that's all it is, uh, because the way it's taught and the way that I think like kids get indoctrinated into this capitalist nationalist system that we have in this country is that racism ended with slavery and then it recropped up in in various different things but that those were just loud minorities that we just kind of had to deal with and then the civil rights movement happened and that made everything better and then obama showed up and then we killed racism we took it out back and shot it in the face with the shotgun of love which is not a thing that should exist. Uh, love should not be fired out of any sort of projectile. Uh, that is that is the kind of love I think the Joker uh, would <laughs> would express. Uh, and I don't think that is the type of love that we should aspire to. Sidebar: I never fucking understood the whole, uh, you know, people that kind of romanticize uh, the Joker and Harley Quinn relationship. Uh, it's toxic, it's vicious, it's fucked up, and that should not be your aspiration for a relationship. I'm sorry if that's what you think it is, that, that that is what you want, but if that is what you want, if you want like a Joker Harley dynamic, you should definitely get therapy because that is something deep rooted because that's a very abusive and toxic and awful relationship. Okay, back to the main point. So again, we, we saw uh, just a few days ago in Virginia, in Loudoun County, and I have family that lives in Loudoun County. My cousin goes to school in Loudoun County, right? Like he's this skinny little Indian kid, just like me. And I, I kind of have to think like, what kind of education is he getting? Like, is he learning the truth about the country that he is in? You know, the country that he is a citizen of because he was born here. Uh, yeah, he was born here. <laughs> um you know, and these people had like their end of the year meeting and they were talking about teaching race in schools. Right. You got to teach the because it's a part of American history. It's not like it isn't. It's still a part of American history. And so they're trying to teach people, teach kids like, hey, this is sort of the things that have happened across um, American history. And this is how race plays uh, a, a role in that. And that's important. Uh, and when that got brought up, there were, oh man, I dropped my pen. Sorry. It's a weird crutch to just have on my hand. Um, but they, but like these, <laughs> these predominantly rich white people freaked out. <laughs> they lost their fucking shit. Right. And this, and critical race theory is a conservative dog whistle. It is. It is a conservative dog whistle. I'm not going to fucking say that it isn't. More, more, more often than not, it is conservatives that are coming out and making the claim that this is toxic, this is negative, this is evil, this is not right, this is lies, you know. And this is coming. I mean, this is coming from states like Florida and Virginia and Georgia, uh, you know, Texas, uh, where Texas a couple years ago in in like 2016, 2015, 2016, 2017 wanted to change the word slaves to workers. And my friend Stuart Huff has a joke where he goes, why don't we just change the word history to bullshit? Because that's exactly what they're advocating to do, right? To say that racism doesn't exist in America is is just putting your the wool over your eyes. It's living in a fucking eyes wide shut nonsense party. What reality are you living in? But again, that's what rich white people do. They don't see what's going on out there. They don't see racial disparities. Their community, they live in gated communities half the time. Or in giant fucking cul-de-sac neighborhoods. So, so let's do this. Let's go, let's go into the truth of, of American history, right? The truth is. America is absolutely a fucking racist country because America is an imperialist country. And regardless of how you shake it, 
imperialism needs to use racism to achieve its goals because imperialism is a consequence of capitalism. That's what it is. Imperialism is a consequence of capitalism. And it's very hard to refute that. Capitalism is a system of looking for infinite wealth on a finite planet. So when you run out of shit to exploit in your country, you start looking outward to be like, how do we fucking exploit other countries and take its resources for our financial gain? That's why capitalism thrives on war. It thrives on coups. It thrives on manipulating democracies, which then don't become democracies because they always lead to authoritarianism because you installed somebody. Nobody voted for this person. So in order to justify these wars, in order to justify you know, taking troops or using your intelligence community to install puppet leaders or manipulate certain other leaders in various other countries to then make deals to, you know, send resources to America and make everything revolve around the American paradigm, you have to dehumanize a whole group of people. And this is this is something that America does non-motherfucking stop. They do, they, it, this just doesn't end in this country. They do it using race. They use, do it using gender. They do it using ideology. They u- do it using religion. Right? It's all about the manipulation game so that you can exploit not just your own people because they've already exploited your people and there's and they've ran through the resources that they can accumulate here and they don't know how to make more and they don't know how to put out the fires. When people in manufacturing started asking for more money, you know, people in industry started like legitimately starting asking for more money. That's when it was like, well, let's go to this country that advocates for slavery and install a guy that's going to make more slavery happen so that we can use them, outsource the jobs and make more money for ourselves. And then we'll control politicians who then will legislate to let us make even more money on top of that. That's how America operates. So race is an, an important part of that to dehumanize and devalue entire groups of people so that it's okay to inflict as much violence as you want on them. And then all of that comes back home to roost. Most of American history has been warfare. Some kind of warfare. Hardly ever has America been in peace. Hardly ever. This is a nation that needs war to thrive. And war is, again, a a pillar of capitalism. When you devalue certain groups of people, especially people that are not white, that's called racism. When you say that only the westernized white countries know how to deal with African, Middle Eastern, Asian, and... Indian countries because the the Anglo-Saxon white dude knows the best, right? That's racism. I remember calling out a woman in Wilmington once who then very obstinately sat in the front row uh, in a venue that there were like 10 or 12 people in. Um, and, uh, she comes up to me and she talks to me about India cause she found out I was an Indian comic. I, uh, I think I'd gotten like some minor amount of press. Like they wrote a little snippet about me and she saw that and came to the show and she talked to me about India and I was like, oh yeah, I grew up there. And then she starts explaining to me how India works. <laughs> yeah. And she was an affluent white woman. Right, dressed to the nines, expensive purse, that sort of... Maybe I'm making a judgment call about her wealth, uh, you know, but it seemed like she was an affluent white woman. And I looked at her, and I was like, you know, I was born there, right? And she was like, well, you came here so young. How old were you, five or six? And I was like, I was eight. Like, I I know how to make 
memories. And I've been there since multiple times. I was like, I know how my own country works. And then she got into an argument. She was like, well, where, where are you from? And I said, Bombay. And she goes, Mumbai. And I said, no, B Bombay. And she goes, well, they changed it in the mid 90s. And I was like, probably. I, I actually don't know when the name change occurred. And she pulled it up on Wikipedia and was like 94, 95 or something. And I was like, yeah, nobody called it that. Everybody called it Bombay. And she goes, well, I guess I guess you don't know that much about your like. And then she started like getting all happy and puppy with me. And I was like, are you seriously like trying to explain? I lived there. I know what people called the city that I was born in. I still go back there and most people refer to it as Bombay. <laughs> because a lot of people grew up with it being called that. So it's difficult for them to make that change. And I was like, hey, can you not explain to me how my own country works? Because it's really rude and condescending. And quite frankly, it's getting it's starting to become a little racist. She goes, no, 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 it's not racist. And I was like, yeah, you're explaining it to me like I'm an idiot. I'm not. I, I appreciate the conversation here, but like, can we move? Can, can we get through this here? Like, I'm telling you what my experience has been. And she got pissy with me because she didn't want to accept the fact that she was demeaning somebody about their own fucking country. And she and she felt like she knew better because she was a white lady. That's that upholding white supremacy. And she was very liberal. I love this place. It was, it was the place was called the Juggling Gypsy. It's a weirdo fucking like circus cafe. The venue is awesome. It's a really cool venue in Wilmington. If you live in Wilmington, go check out the Juggling Gypsy, man. It's fucking great. But like that's how people treat minorities because they're they're taught that only the white man can help these minorities. All oh, these poor brown people just don't know any better. That's how it's taught. It's taught through the the white supremacist lens. Even the education system, however benign it sounds, has a white supremacist bent to it. War is 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 also white supremacist. It's white. It's it's a white nation trying to dominate primarily brown countries in South America, in the Middle East. In the next story we'll cover. I'll, I'm going to talk about how America is influencing India. This country was built on dissent. And, but it's only dissent if it comes from a specific group of people, right? And look, if you're if you're a white person, which I, I know there's some out there, uh, statistically speaking, like it would be crazy if there were like no white people watching the show. Uh, here's the thing is like, I'm not talking about all white people here. Obviously not. I'm talking about the rich white people that can't handle the fact that the country that gave them their crazy amounts of wealth, that wealth was acquired through just pure fucking evil and exploitation and dominance. But that's how capitalism operates. That's how imperialism works. And that's why imperialism and capitalism need racism to work, right? So even, even if you're not a rich white person, you are taught that the reason why you are not a rich white person is not because these other rich white people have accumulated their fucking wealth at the top and aren't distributing it back down. They're trying to get more and more wealth to themselves. It's because black people are, 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 are taking your wealth and the immigrants are taking your wealth. These people that threw, threw a tantrum in, in, in Loudoun County, in Georgia, in Florida, about teaching the true racist history of this country, don't even understand exactly how th this situation represents the racist history of America. Uh, the Loudoun County one specifically had um, sheriffs there. The, the sheriff department showed up. And they had to, like, arrest a bunch of people because they were going to start a riot. And what did they do? They talked to them nicely. Hey, Larry, I'm sorry. I know the meeting's over. The meeting's not over. It's over when I say it's over. I, I Look, I get it. It's okay. And they took them out. Had that been a black person, whether it was a black person of, of affluence or not, 
they would have been beaten to the ground, tasered, possibly shot, dragged out of their hog tie. I mean, the list will go on as to what they would do. Just even even them them like not wanting the, the way they're reacting to this proves the reason why we need to teach race in America. And even that is just the tip of the iceberg. We can prove that racism is still exists exists in America and needs to be taught so that we can, you know, the next generation of kids coming out can actually do something to improve the world. The endless cases of police brutality prove this. The fact that we ignore uh, the Tulsa race massacre and call it a riot. No, it was a bunch of white people rioting. Call it the Tulsa white people riot because black people got money. That would be accurate if you want to call it a riot. But it's a race massacre. They fucking murdered people. Indiscriminately. What about the true history of the Black Panthers? That's a part of American history. Yeah, we learn about MLK, but we don't learn that MLK was an anti-war socialist. Yeah, we learn about Malcolm X, but we don't learn that Malcolm X was an anti-war socialist. And now fucking Florida, <laughs> Florida wants people, it, it basically indoctrinate them into patriotism. Ignore the reality. We don't learn about the move bombings, why minorities are scapegoated to ensure that more rich people are, stay rich. And the and the the reason is psychological, right? The reason why these parents are having a conniption over all of this is psychological. And part so I mean part of it is propaganda. Part of it is is, is absolutely that, you know, we 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 have propaganda. We, Americans are the most propagandized people on the planet. That's ju that's just the reality of some things, you know. We we have a person we we have Joe Biden in charge right now who is just the like one of the worst fucking politicians that has ever walked the planet. And and liberals want you to believe that he is basically like the greatest president that's ever. Oh, he's the next FDR. Really was did FDR try to incarcerate as many black people as possible because they enjoyed the benefits of smoking a plant? Really? Like, did he try to cancel all social programs? But there you go, right? We're erasing this history. So even, that's why I'm saying it's not a conservative or liberal matter. It's a rich white person matter. That's who's resisting this. They can be liberal or conservative because liberals don't want to actually accept that there's this historic systemic racism that has existed and their favorite politician is part of, 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 of the contribution to this. So they don't want you to learn this shit. Conservatives don't want you to learn this shit because, you know, it makes America look bad when you say that it's super fucking racist. And of course it does, because it is. Racism and white supremacy in this country are poisons. They're poisons. And these rich white people don't want to fucking believe that they're bad people that that they themselves are 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 willfully spreading the poison across the country so to them they their whole worldview will become shattered through their kids learning the actual fucking history of this country and psychologically they're not prepared for it They don't want to believe that they're bad people. And look, you're all, you would only be a bad person is if all of this information was presented to you and you go, huh, let's not talk about it anymore or pretend it's not there or claim that it's lies. That would make you a bad person. What you're doing is making you a bad person. Learning that stuff and saying, wow, that's really terrible. You know what? I am a white person in a position of privilege. 
uh, I'm going to use a portion of my wealth that I have inherited through this exploitation, and I'm going to redistribute it to you know uh, low income people. Maybe I'll see if 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 people in Loudoun County or somewhere in Georgia or Florida are are struggling with rent or making food, and I'm going to just take care of that for them. I can maybe sh shell out fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars a month helping out a couple of people not get evicted. You know, maybe I'll pay off somebody's debt. The next time maybe I go to a party and someone says something fucked up about Asians or black people, I'll, I'll say, hey, no, that's not okay. Or if I go to a comedy club and someone makes a, a, a low-hanging fruit racist joke, I'm, I'm not going to support that comedian anymore. Or that establishment that hires that comedian. And I'm going to make it known. I'm going to use my position of power for good instead of evil. But they don't want to take that step because to them, just challenging the beliefs that they have lived with in and of itself is a complete shift of their worldview. And that is something that they can't handle. The problem is, now it seems like it's a shock, right? Oh, man, all of this information is coming out so quickly. Last year, we saw the largest you know, civil rights movement since uh, MLK come out and and hit the streets. And my goodness, that that must have been such a shock to these rich white people that didn't even know that this sort of stuff existed. And part of that might be true, but the reality is that it's not. These movements have existed for, for decades now. The reason why it's a shock to them is because they've ignored it. That's not the fault of activists. That's not the fault of people marching on the streets. That's not the fault of any commentators trying to uh, enlighten people with this information. That is the fault of the individual that decided to ignore history. To be comfortable with themselves. And to be comfortable with the fact that their wealth comes from capitalist exploitation, which uses racism to gain more wealth. And I'm sorry to be a little harsh about this, but fucking get over it, man. You've had, you guys have had so much time to get on board. Little by little, little by little, you could have gotten on board. What we are looking at is the five stages of grief to American exceptionalism. American exceptionalism is a lie. Outright. It's a fucking lie. And this is the, this is anger. This is stage one. This is the first time because their kids have to learn this now. This is the first time that it's actually right in front of their faces and they can't ignore it. And they're not prepared to deal with it. I mean, they're never going to be prepared to deal with it, but they just don't fucking want to. All right, let's look at your comments. Holly says it includes includes the blue checks. Yeah, the blue checks do this too, right? Post racism after Obama, uh, and and yeah, exactly. Holly, Holly says uh, imperialism and capitalism need racism, and they need identity politics. Um, Holly says try never. No, I can't remember a peacetime. You know, I don't know if I particularly remember um, America being in peace either. Uh, I think I think. Most people think the 90s were that. Um, but that was because we weren't really talking about warfare a whole lot. Uh, you know, the Gulf happened. And then after that, when Clinton came into office, we weren't talking about Sarajevo. We weren't talking about what was going on in Africa. Uh, the only thing we remember Clinton for is uh, a blowjob and a surplus. We don't remember him for the for the uh, war on on black people in this country. Cynical girl, welcome to the stream. Uh, <laughs> fucking Florida, get me out of here. I know. Uh, I wish we could. We're we're we're, we're trying. Um, <laughs> Ali says, but they create jobs. The rich white people create jobs. Yes, yes, they do. 
And why do they create jobs? So that they can have more people to exploit. <laughs> I'm going to bring in Aiden's, com Aiden's comment here. His hashtag all white people. <laughs> yeah. I, this is the death of American exceptionalism. That's really all it is. And uh, and unfortunately, it's not going quietly into that good night. It's going to put up a fight. It's going to be it's going to have to go through the five stages of grief. Um, and eventually it'll it'll have to accept that it's not exceptional. All right, guys, let's move to this story, because uh, this is an important one that you're probably not going to see on any sort of corporate mainstream uh, news. Saw this over on the World Socialist website, who've been doing a great job covering this kind of stuff. Um, they do also a great job talking about uh, labor actions, strikes, that sort of stuff as well. So I have talked about how India and um, India, Japan, Australia and the United States calling themselves the Quad are, are, are basically trying to um, attack China, right? Uh, the United States wants to increase uh, ag aggression on China. So they're basically trying to use countries around there in the, in the Pacific um, to, to mount pressure on them. And uh, India uh, has been encouraged by American weapons because right now they have contracts with Russia. Uh Lloyd Austin has gone and met with Modi and and um, who's that other fuck in India? God damn it. Amit Shah. He's met with Amit Shah. And uh, Amit Shah is the guy that basically was like, you guys are farmers. So you probably won't understand uh, how policies and finances work. Like he talked down to the farmers that were on strike where they were like, no, we get it. That's why we're striking. It's because you're an asshole trying to make money off of like killing our labor. So we, we get it. We would like you to fucking not do that though. So America, you know, basically said buy American weapons, you know, we'll help you guys out and uh, keep an eye on China. Uh, so they've moved 200 to 250,000 troops to the Chinese border under the guise of, you know, well, we got to stop China's deployment. To so China's moving, um, and, and the U.S. did this a couple months ago uh, with Russia, right? China's moving troops within its own borders, which they're allowed to do. Uh, and America's like, no, we, you should go and, like, that could be a strike, so you should preemptively get in there. And, you know, America did this with Russia a couple months ago where Russia did the same thing. They moved troops within their own borders and America was like, we're scrambling the jets. The jets have to be scrambled. Get them to Alaska, right? Remember the thing that we made fun of Sarah Palin for? Literally fucking liberals are advocating for that exact same thing. I can see Russia from my house and they're moving their troops. Get scramble the jets. That's... So now, uh, because they're moving this troops, these these troops, uh, India is doing. India is basically building crash infrastructure, which means that they're like very quickly building um, infrastructure for military deployment. You know, roads, bases, bridges, that sort of shit, just so they can move troops and maneuver them around uh, uh, the the area that they're going under because it's mountainous. That area is pretty mountainous. Meanwhile, uh, so they're spending all this money on doing that. But meanwhile, uh, the citizens of India could use some infrastructure. They could use some new roads, right? They could use better internet. They could use, uh, I don't know, more vaccines, more hospital help, more aid to people that are dying of COVID and the black fungus that was uh, running rampant in that country. They need internet services. They need better rail, uh, better rail systems. They need to find a way to decrease the amount of poverty that exists in that country. That is a much better way of spending your fucking money than, than this invisible enemy bullshit. Oh, China's moving troops within its own borders. Oh, that's evil. America moves troops around the fucking globe and, and nobody fucking bats an eye.
again, this is a cue that India is taking from America, which is spend more money on warfare, spend more money on military, and fuck the rest of your people. Because that is going to help you accumulate more wealth that you can shove to the top. So that India, which already has a bunch of rich people there and, and, and a massive amount of income inequality, can continue to amass more wealth. And that's also the importance of um, Kashmir. Uh, they need to have demographic control. They need to have Hindu demogra demographic control of Kashmir so they can just annex it into India. Um, and uh, there's a whole history. I, I did a whole history about Kashmir. That, that, that show exists on this channel. So I would, I would recommend to go check that out. Um, and... Basically, like what America is trying to do um, with India is turn it into the Israel of the Pacific. Um, and, and you know, pa uh, Kashmir is going to be the Palestine of that region. You're going to see this theocratic military dictatorship crop up. It's already starting to happen. You know, they're controlling the Internet there. People are not able to get in and out of that region very easily. Journalists are being censored. People are being killed. And they're under a Indian military occupation. Part of this is, is because they it's it's to uphold the the relig religious um a demographic they want it to be an all hindu nation and that's for another reason too is because that's what partition was all about partition was splitting up the country on a religious line which is fucking stupid um but they're giving into they're giving into british imperialism anyway like that's that's you you gained your freedom and then you just continue to do continue to like carry forward the legacy of british imperialism how fucking dumb is that? And then now you're lining up with another imperialist country so that you yourself can become an imperialist country? Why? Why would you want to do that? To me, it's it's traitorous to, to your own people. But that's what they want. And in five years, India will be headed this down the same fucking path that Israel is walking down and they will become another apartheid state. I still hear it. I hear it from members of my own family, the fucking Islamophobia claiming that Kashmir needs to be a part of India because it always has been. No, it hasn't. It's been a, it's, it's, it's its own fucking state. And at this point, America, China, Pakistan, India, and the UK Oh, a lot of aid to spending fucking 60 years fucking that region up. They should be their own country, and all five of these countries owe them aid. Owe them aid for being imperialist bastards. And now they're trying to use them as a, a, a you know, a flank point for China, a war that we, they don't need to get into. A war that you know the the United States will uh, will not win. You, th there doesn't need to be a ground war with China. There just doesn't. America is the one that brought them into this cycle of capitalism in the first place, and now that they're doing better, and now that they hold a, more power, we're like, oh, we'll use our fucking military against you. Re fucking ridiculous. Very disappointing move in India. Uh, Holly says, poor India is in a bad position with U.S. money helping. Uh, yes, they, they are in a bad position, but they don't need to be. That that They could have rejected that deal. Um, but again, Modi is, is uh, pretty right-wing and... Um, is not it's it, he just doesn't give a shit because he's also a Hindu nationalist. He claims he's not. He's apologized to the Muslim community for what happened in Gujarat, but 
his actions speak otherwise. If if you are truly apologetic for what happened in Gujarat in the early 2000s, um, then you would not be doing what you're doing in Kashmir. You would not be trying to take control of that. And uh, Holly points this out in the comment sections over on Rockfin here is that's how America fights, proxies. And that's what India is becoming, right? They're becoming a proxy. They're becoming a backup. Uh, India, uh, India is going to be, like I said, the Israel of the Pacific, and they're going to be there to, I mean, I would not be surprised if in the next few years we see an American base in Kashmir and we fund a bunch of weapons to them and they become the front and take, and India takes the brunt of all of the military force of China. America is not going to really be, be there a whole lot. So Indian lives are going to be put on the line for American interests that may or may not bleed over into being Indian interests. It just doesn't, none of this makes any goddamn sense to me. And again, you see an entire government seeking imperialist power, selling out their own people. And that was part of the fucking problem in the first place. That's how Br the British occupation happened for 400 years. And that's why it's important to learn your fucking history, people. Like, that's that's why it's such an important fucking thing. That's why I've been so hell-bent on learning history over the last couple of years and trying to use that in my comedy and commentary to, like... Anyway. All right. Uh, I want to get into our next story because it's an important one. And I actually fucked up because I want to pull up a article. So you have to go to radindymedia.com. By the way, go to radindymedia.com. I'm going to drop that link uh, into the comments here. And that's the one. Um, apologies for a little bit of a delay here a good place to get a lot of uh lefty news uh and there's very good information there so you should you should definitely check that out that way you know people don't need to go to five different sites uh or or even have their inboxes flooded because right now I'm, I'm subscribed to like eight or nine different you know uh, lefty news organizations so that i can um keep up with what's going on and I still, you know, that's still, there's still a lot of information overload or anything like that. But, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, sharing my screen, sharing my screen. And there we go. All right. So this is, uh, Kevin Gastola, the great Kevin Gastola, uh, fantastic reporter there. Uh, so let's, let's read through this. So basically, the United States has decided to appeal the decision. Uh, to extradite Julian Assange, even though uh, the the judge said, hey, he might kill himself because your prisons are super fucking terrible, to which I think Joe Biden high-fived himself uh, because he created that system. Um, good for him, am I right? Okay. Uh, so let's read this, uh, and then we'll see if I have time to get into the last story that I want to get into. The High Court of Justice in the United Kingdom agreed to hear the United States government appeal in the extradition case against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, but on limited grounds. Great. According to Stella Morris, who is Assange's partner, the high court rejected the efforts of the United States to second guess the magistrate's conclusions on medical and expert evidence. Niels Melzer has come out and said that Julian Assange is being tortured. He's a victim of torture. He's also facing like massive psychological issues right now. Um, he's currently in Belmarsh prison. So basically the U S prison system is going to come help, uh, you know, get pop, pop, might possibly get him to kill himself, but the UK br prison system, eh, that's just going to severely depress him, but we won't push him to commit suicide. It's fucking insanity, right? Like the double standard that this judge has exhibited is, is phenomenal. Uh, so no date was immediately set for a hearing on the appeal. And it was unclear whether the high court had considered the request by Assange's legal team for a cross appeal, uh, which I absolutely think that they should. And at this point, really, the United States doesn't have any grounds to appeal. They don't have any grounds for extradition. Their key witness just confessed to committing perjury. 
So like that whole testimony should be removed, which should change everything. This should go into a fucking mistrial. He should be released from prison already. I'm going to say that till he fucking is. So the dissenter reviewed the appeal of submissions, which are not publicly available. On behalf of the U.S. government, the Crown Prosecution Service challenged the district court Judge Vanessa Barrister's decision to oppose extradition on account of Assange's medical condition. Again, suicidal. Uh, he is that depressed about what's going on. Um, the environment has triggered those, you know, pro those emotions for him. And and who wouldn't? Would you not be depressed if you were kept in prison for uh, over like damn near a decade? with limited contact with people that you love because you did your fucking job as a journalist. Prosecutors contended the judge, uh, c contended the judge made errors, errors of the law when determining whether it would be oppressive to approve his extradition. They also insisted the judge should have notified the U S government of her provisional view so that they could offer her assurances to alleviate her concerns. Like what dismantling the entire prison industrial complex, because that's what she said was fucking oppressive because it is. Furthermore, prosecutors maintain the judge should have disqualified defense psychiatrist Professor Michael Kopelman, whose assessment and testimony on Assange played a crucial part in her decision. Oh, should they have disqualified that defense be because it proves the United States is, is advocating to torture a, a journalist and proving that the United States doesn't believe in the First Amendment? Attorneys for Assange countered claims that the Crown Prosecution Service put forward in the appeal maintaining Barrister did not commit an error when she concluded Assange's suicidal impulses would come from his psychiatric condition and would not be his own voluntary act. So again, if 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 you're going to say we should disregard that, is that because you're planning if we extradite Assange you're planning on dismantling the entire prison industrial complex, changing a bunch of laws so that nonviolent drug uh, uh, offenders don't have to go into prison. And I don't know, people that collapse the economy and fuck over the American populace should. So a bunch of bankers replace nonviolent fucking drug offenders in prison. If that's what you're going to do, then maybe she can consider it. But that's not what you're going to do. And even then, I don't think a lot of people are willing to, like, give up the First Amendment. Regarding the argument that the judge was in uh, was wrong to favor Copelman's evidence, the Assange legal team asserted, this attack only fails to recognize the entitlement of the primary decision maker to reach her own decision on the weight to be attached to the expert evidence of the defense on one hand and the prosecution's experts on the other. Basically claiming that, like, whatever the whatever Assange's defense comes up with is bullshit. So they could, they could essentially get, like, a mentalist to come in and be like, I saw deep within Assange's soul, and it was to crush the DNC by means of Russia. I saw the sickle cross the hammer. And then they would be like, ha-ha, mentalist said it. That is a, a real mentalist that worked on the show The Mentalist as a consultant for two episodes after he was fired for making lewd comments at Jennifer Love Hewitt claiming that that's what he saw in her soul. But that's proof. <laughs> Your key witness is a child rapist that is now on the run and has confessed to committing perjury. What do, like what defense do you have other than what that well that psychologist did? Uh, no, we don't we don't like the psychologist because he says things that we think is not okay with our our thing. Uh, so here we go. The high court apparently agreed. Barrister was well within her rights to consider what weight to attach to the evidence 
from the medical professionals. Prosecutors offered the high court assurances, quote, assurances that were never put forward during or prior to the extradition trial. They suggested the United States government would not impose special administrative measures against Assange in the in, in pretrial confinement or in prison if he was convicted, though they did not say they would not hold him in admin, administrative segregation or other forms of isolation. So basically, there's no... Like, yeah, you might not put him in prison, but you don't like you could just put him in isolation again, which would then contribute to his d d declining mental health. The prosecutors claimed Assange would not be imprisoned at uh, 80X Florence in Colorado, a supermax prison, but they they included a caveat that left opened the possibility that he could be sent to the facility if he committed a, quote, future act that met the, quote, test for designation. What, what, is that, what does that mean? So if he continues being a publisher, you, you, you can claim to send him to prison for that? Oh, but he's not a publisher. He's a hacker. You don't have any evidence to prove that anymore. Because the, the barely fucking coherent witness that you had turned out to be a fucking liar and a child rapist. Significantly, the prosecutors tried to salvage the extradition case by agreeing to allow Assange to apply for prisoner transfer to Australia under the Council of Europe Convention, uh, Convention on the Transfer of Sentenced Persons. The United States government would consent to the transfer. So imprison him in Australia. Anybody else find it really ironic that he's going to be moved from UK to Australia into prison? And Australia was like a British prison colony? Does anybody find this just farcical? This decision is, is a fucking farce top to bottom. God damn it. Uh, Assange's legal team bristled at this offer. They had every opportunity to offer such assurance at the extradition hearing since the relevant Council of Europe treaty has been in operation for many years. But the U.S. government did not offer this assurance so it could be tested, uh, so it could be tested during the extradition trial and before the judge issued her decision. Quote, such a, uh, a transfer under specific provisions of the treaty could not take place until the conclusion of the trial and all appellate processes, which are obviously likely to be very prolonged, the defense replied. In the meantime, Mr. Assange would be detained in the conditions of isolation identified by the defense expert, witnesses, and in any event, an alien and hostile environment far from his family. Transition, fucking send him home. There's no reason to keep him in this bullshit. It was not immediately clear how the high court responded to the, quote, assurances put forward by the U.S. government well after the extradition request was litigated in September 2020. Morris spoke uh, to the press outside the high court after the decision. She had visited Assange at Belmarsh High Security Prison in the morning. The U.S. government should have accepted the magistrate's court decision. Instead, it keeps this case going, Morris declared. She contended that the case is falling apart because the U.S. Department's uh, key witness, Siggy Thorderson, admits to admits he lied in exchange for immunity from U.S. prosecutors. The lawyers of, on, of Julian Assange were spied on. Their offices were broken into. Even our six-month-old baby boy was targeted while in the Ecuadorian embassy, and now the high court has limited the grounds on which they are allowed to appeal, Morris added. So at this point, really, like, who is against Julian Assange? There is no case. This is all bullshit. They are now just willingly torturing a journalist for revealing American war crimes, for revealing the crimes of the elites on a global scale. That's what WikiLeaks does. That's what Julian Assange revealed. He dared point out that Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party are just piles of shit trying to get your votes so that they can shit all over you. Sorry for the graphic. 
you know, metaphor there, but you get it. Uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland has egg on his face because of the decision to use a witness that perjured himself in order to try to imprison Julian and keep him in prison. Asked about Assange's condition, Moore shared that he is very unwell and described Belmarsh as a horrible place. She mentioned that another prisoner recently committed suicide. It's a daily struggle. He won his case in January. Why is he even in prison? Why is he even being prosecuted? There's no legal case against him, Morris concluded. There you have it, folks. There's no fucking legal case against him. There's no fucking legal case. None. Zero. Zilch. Zip. Why is he still in prison? Oh, is it because the United States is trying to fucking torture a journalist because that's what they do? Because the United States actually doesn't fucking believe in the First Amendment? They don't believe in freedom of the press? What they believe is in freedom of propaganda. That's why networks like CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, NPR, PBS are all fine. And they can say whatever the fuck they want. Including some McCarthyist bullshit. Including, you know, that's why TYT is doing fine. Because they they get to go on and say, oh, well, Aaron Mate, which was going to be the next segment, but I guess I rolled that into this thing. Oh, Aaron Mate is a fucking paid by, paid by Putin. Oh, he's probably paid by a bunch of other dictators, too. Where's the proof? It doesn't matter because under uh, under America, there is no freedom of press. There's freedom of propaganda. So you just get to levy fucking unwarranted attacks at people claiming that they're Russian, claiming that they're they're spies, claiming that they work for, uh, you know, the enemies of America, that they're treasonous. And it's fine. And it's totally fucking fine. That's what fucking America believes in. That's the freedom of press that exists. It's not freedom of press. It's the freedom of fucking propaganda. That's what it is. There is no case against Assange. There is no anything legitimate you can say to me uh, uh, that that is going to, is, you know, to change my mind about Assange because there's nothing you can say. It's all falling apart. Let's all take a breath. <laughs> uh, let's look at your comments. Gene says the U.S. government sucks. Yes. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Uh, Holly uh, says Julian should be free, 100%. Absolutely. Cynical girl agrees. Um this the Spanish company's employee, yeah. Uh, David Morales, David Morales was talking about how, um, uh, you know, he's working with the Americans now and the Americans with the CIA. So the intelligence community basically spied on him. Uh, Holly says, Barrister is a piece of work, she's doing the US and UK's bidding only in that she's keeping him in prison. Um, the 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 judgment was to not extradite him because he'd kill himself. Sarah, Sarah Wagner, welcome to the stream. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is so embarrassing and at, at every point should have been thrown out. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. There's no reason for this fucking thing to, to exist. Climate Rebel says they're they know they're going to lose. They're just being dicks. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, that is the case, and I think this is going to be a huge blemish on um, the the past three administrations. Uh, we're talking Biden, Trump, and Obama, who all fucking did this. Now Biden has uh, every ounce of power to cancel this appeal, drop the charges, and let him out of prison, but he won't. But he won't because he was part of the Obama administration and the Obama administration hated the whistleblowers. The worst part is Julian rots and waits. Uh, un unfortunately, that is. That is, the, that is the unfortunate truth of this situation. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, more people join the, uh, the, the free Assange movement. Uh, you know, and uh, more people get educated about what's going on. There's tons of videos on my channel 
There is uh, tons of videos from the Action for Assange folks. Uh, Richard Medhurst, Kevin Gastola does great work. Lee Camp has done great work. Jimmy Dore has done great work. Ron Cone, Graham Elwood, Kim Ivers. These, these, Nico House, uh, the Convo Couch. I mean, the list goes on and on. If you want, if you want accurate information of, uh, about Assange, don't go to CNN. Don't go to any of the propaganda networks. Go to real fucking journalists. Like the Convo Couch, like Kevin Gastola, like Richard Methurst. Fuck, go to comedians like me, Ron Placone, Lee Camp, Graham Elwood, Jimmy Dore, Steph Zamorado, Katie Halper. That's where the real information is. All of the rest of it is fucking propaganda because that's what exists in America. We have the freedom of propaganda, not a free press. All right. <laughs> msm is scared they could be next uh no i don't think they are scared holly i think i i think that they are uh they're fine with this because they stay within the boundaries of what the united states propaganda wants them to say uh they're the mouthpieces of the american war economy so i don't think they're nervous they're they're ignoring assange because every time they cover assange um uh, you know more people side with him and the only person within MSM that is that has given this any level of uh, coverage is Tucker Carlson on Fox News. <laughs> like that's embarrassing. The liberal media outlets, the Democratic control, that the Democratic Party controlled media outlets, are are too worried pushing McCarthyism. For them to say, yeah, hey, we, we we should not be keeping a fucking journalist in prison. But they're not journalists. They are propaganda mouthpieces to the American war economy. All right, folks. I think we're going to wrap up the stream here. Thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are, have been great. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, please make sure you hit the like button. Please make sure you're subscribed, whether you're watching this on uh, Rockfin, Odyssey, whether you're listening to the audio version, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, please make sure you're still subscribed to the channel uh, and share this out wherever you wind up finding this thing. Share this out with as many people as you can. These are important topics that you're not going to particularly hear um, on, uh, on mainstream media. Uh, so please do share this out as much as you can. If you are on stable financial ground, uh, you can make a donation or become a sustaining member, which gets you a whole bunch of bonus stuff from bonus stand-up comedy content, uh, free tickets to shows, et cetera, et cetera, over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com slash donate. Uh, and, uh, uh, you, you know, you can pick various different ways or you can leave a tip over on Rockfin, even though right now I can't access a lot of my Rockfin funds, I will find a way to do that. Um, you know, and I, I feel particularly bad. Like I don't want to create a new account because then all the people that have left me tips, all of the, the, the subscribers that have come through via my channel or anybody else's channel, you know, I don't want you guys to feel like you didn't get your money's worth because I you didn't receive the funds or anything like that. Um, you know, I don't want your your hard earned money to just be lost in the ether of crypto. Um, so, but you know, I'm going to figure that out. So if you do want to leave a tip, you totally can. Last but not least, you can join my email list at krishmohanhaha.substack.com. I send one out every month or every week. Sorry. I send uh, an email out every week, usually on Sundays. Uh, and it's a, just a roundup of all the videos and podcasts I've released that week. And sometimes I write fun little essays. So I'll kind of go into the deep dive of what's, what's been going on with my car on this Sunday as so, uh, stay tuned for that and live shows live shows are coming back so if you're in pittsburgh cleveland baltimore lansing detroit uh i'm 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 coming to your cities i'm adding more shows as we speak so go to my website krishmohanhaha.com for all those details um i'm i'm going to be touring around with a brand new show uh and if you want to be the first person to see that brand new show i'm going to be doing a virtual version of that show uh, and tickets for that are available right now on July 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern. So uh, ho hopefully you guys will check that out. Uh, but we are going to wrap things up 
uh and uh and we will i'm gonna i'm gonna probably drop a dispatch episode tomorrow and friday uh so there'll be a couple more videos coming out this week on 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 all these channels so stay tuned for that uh podcasts and all that sort of all that sort of jazz uh but you guys are awesome thank you guys for tuning in holly cynical girl uh climate rebel sarah gene uh, you guys are all fantastic. Thank you for thank you for uh, leaving comments and hanging out today. Um, till next week, enjoy your weekend. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other, and we'll see you soon. Bye, guys.